Sun Mint Morris here. Welcome to my final lesson in my Reggie Young series. If you're interested in checking out the other lessons in this series or purchasing the transcription pack of the three solos that we've covered, please check out the links in the description below. In this final lesson, we're going to take a look at the way in which Reggie Young would take some just really simple blues licks and put them in a country context. This is a great kind of lesson in taking vocabulary you know from other genres and then just changing it slightly in maybe its rhythm, its tone, uh, to, accom or to accommodate the genre that you're playing. So as we looked at the blues um, in our last lesson and how he kind of navigates that across the fretboard, we're going to work within those shapes and then add in a few of these licks. So. The first kind of lick that I think of when I when I hear Reggie Young is this basic blues lick that sounds something like this. It's a really simple kind of Albert King, BB King idea where all we're doing in the key of A is bending our D, which is the fourth, up to a fifth, and then playing E and A on the next two strings, and then sliding up to the octave on the second string. That's one variation of it. Sometimes what it'll do is uh, do that initial bend in two notes and then come down the minor pentatonic. So we might go. Or we're going up to that first string and then just coming down. Other times he'll do that, but then at the end of his phrase, he'll put in kind of another signature lick of his where he'll play, or a variation on that, which is just kind of a nice, again, blues lick where we're bending that D up to an E, and then bringing it back down, releasing, pulling off to the C, and then doing a half step bend to an E flat, and resolving, or doing a slide, D to E, and resolving there. So with that kind of bass lick and those little variations, um, what he would do is incorporate that into different parts of his solos. So if you listen carefully, he'll do that on the intros and the turnarounds of his solos. And then he'll do it in one more place, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So if we're playing um, over kind of a rhythm like I think I'll stay here and drink, and we're coming in on the four chord as the soloists do in the song. A great way to get into that would be playing that type of lick to get us into the D chord, playing some A pentatonics, then bringing back in the major sound, focusing on the major third as we talked about in the last lesson. So if we're playing kind of a rhythm that's going... Another one without that slide up. So just being able to do that in time there is a great thing to um, kind of get into your playing. Now, if we're playing a one, four, five, after we play the five chord, you would typically come back with an answer um, using that kind of lick. So if we're playing on the five chord, maybe some like E major uh, thing. That's how he would phrase that. Play your major lick. And so on. So being able to put that at the intro and then the outro to give you some upward momentum and intensity is a great uh, way of incorporating just a standard blues lick into your country playing. Now, the other place where he would play that lick quite often is over the five chord. So he would come up and jump the octave to it. So he'd come up and play up here in this pentatonic position over the, the E. So if we're playing... That's fair game too. So if we're coming to the E chord or the five chord in the turn, um, 
before the turnaround. So we're playing maybe a, uh, an A. <laughs> drop that in and typically off of beat two or three. So if we're going and that's how you would drop that in there. And just again, variations, come up with your own ideas. Simple lick there. The other uh, kind of component that I think of when I imagine trying to emulate Reggie Young's playing is his use of double stops as just kind of accents. Um, this is really nice because sometimes after playing a bunch of single notes for a while, it gets boring and you want to vary up the sound. So being able to just to put in some key double stops um, to just kind of broaden your sound is a good thing as well. So typically what he would do is take a few different double stops across the neck. So if we're looking at the A chord here, within this minor pentatonics, we've got a couple of different options. So the first one is just playing the flat third and fifth and just bending it up a little kind of quarter step or half step. Okay. The next one would be to play over the D and F sharp and then combine them. So just putting that up a half step and resolving. So we kind of loop that in with some of the ideas we're doing. Our playing sounds so much fuller instantly. That's going to be kind of your basic double stop usage in this area. The other one that he would do quite a, uh, a bit is up here out of our A chord shape here, or we could think about it as like a, a D chord or D7, where he would play the F sharp and the C. So if we're thinking this in terms of the key of A, that's our sixth and our flat third. And maybe he would kind of give a little bend to that third there and then release it to the fifth and the third, the E and the C, and then resolve it typically. And that works great over the, the one chord. And it also works great over the four chord. So if we want kind of like a, a quick double stop that kind of grabs our attention, um, that would be a great place to do it. I kind of think of it in, um, along the lines of how B.B. King would come up and play like the octave of a note. So if he was playing blues and he was going. It just kind of grabs our attention to bring us back into what we're doing. So that's kind of how I'd see that um, in terms of functioning within our solo. So if we're playing, again, kind of with that I think I'll stay here and drink rhythm. That's kind of how that would function. So if we put all of this together, we have a really nice solo on our hands. We've got our pentatonics that we're using, some key blues licks that builds the intensity, and then some double stops that we're inserting to just kind of keep the, the, the sound going, interest in the solo, and expanding out of just the single notes. Kind of um, expanding this, the, the kind of sonic template of our solo, right? So if we put it all together, we might have something like this.
can take some of those ideas and incorporate them into your playing. And please, if you haven't checked out the other lessons in this series, see the description um, below and click on those links, and I'll see you in the upcoming lessons. Thank you.